after three. Yeah, I drink maybe a full cup a day, and within those, like, at the end of the two weeks, I was almost on two and a half, this which is, is the really wrong, bad. This is the wrong hunt. Do you want to redo it, or do you just want to go No, ahead? no, no, we need to do the one that uh, gets you what you need. Um, oh. What's the tiny green number on top, right? It's my frame rate. Hey, I got that too. Yo. Let's see. Says it's trying to send the data to Twitch right now. Perfect. Okay, we're live. All right, good. Awesome. I cool. see everyone talking in chat. All right. Let's get this open up. Fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in uh, to the Logitech G and Herman Miller partnership live stream. Uh, today we'll be diving into kind of how this partnership happened, as well as looking at some of the factors that influenced the design um, for some of these products that we created. Uh, I would like to preface the stream by saying that we will not be discussing specific product details, but rather we'll be focusing more on the partnership as a whole. Um, we will be playing some golf with your friends today, uh, as well as taking intermittent, intermittent pauses to answer some of the questions that we've seen the community already ask, as well as reading through the chat and kind of trying to grab some of those questions that you guys came up with today um, and getting those answered. So without further ado, uh, we can jump into some introductions. Hello, I am Brandon Ho. I work for Logitech G, which you can see right here. Uh, I work on social content as well as on content creator relations. Um, today I'll be kind of acting as the host, uh, trying to read chat um, and getting those questions answered for you guys and hopefully destroying these two in some mini golf. Uh, ben, if you, if you want to take it away and introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Ben. Uh, I work on the Logitech G side. I've been with Logitech for a couple of years now, um, working as on um, the marketing side. So nice to meet everybody. Yeah, my name is John Campbell. Uh, I work at Herman Miller. Um, I am our business lead for gaming. Um, I'm really excited to uh, talk about our partnership and play some golf. All right, awesome. Let's let's just jump into it. I know that you guys previously said that you kind of just wanted to play a really hard map. So I looked for one that looked <laughs> sort of complicated. <laughs> um, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. To, to give the stream some context, none of us have really played this game before. Um, I'm not sure if Ben has dove into this last night and started playing a bunch nope, because nope, he looked nope. very excited. Oh, you're saying that. I'd like we'll to see. be surprised. I'd like to be surprised. Here, we'll, we'll switch up colors. Everyone knows that mini golf, uh, I'm pretty sure blue and pink are the best colors. So I'll be blue. Uh, ben here is, is, is going to be in pink, and, and John yeah, will be, be the color green. I chose Space I Station, which sounds futuristic. And, you know, we're talking about technology, so I thought it was fitting. So we can kind of just jump in here. Absolutely. Ooh. I'm excited. I have a couple of friends that have been playing this game, uh, you know, since quarantine started, and they've been saying lots of good things. So I'm I'm stoked. Sure. Let me turn the volume up for the game. All right. So, am I going first? I guess. So we we are all kind of going at the same time. There was there was no real option to switch up stroke, so we can just pause whenever you need to to answer a question. I don't I'm know if you guys have oh. a general oh. strategy. For this game uh make make the ball go in the hole that's my this is my strategy i feel like i tend to just full send oh. every chance like oh look at that hole in one nice oh practice. man already starting off strong Ooh. no h does anyone get no h no maybe my name i, I don't, don't get it is there an actual meaning behind it oh it's the only right way to spell John. Oh, wow. No H. Oh. No, with no H. Oh. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, you guys are... There we go. Not too bad so far. That one stroke lead. Oh. All right, where's the hole on this one? Oh, we gotta go through the, the duck. I'm guessing uh, we have to go up. I'm gonna just full send again. Oh. Oh. Didn't oh, I guess to see that. that. This is this is the opportunity. Oh, <laughs> the opportunity. So oh. one of the one of the questions I already see uh, being asked is is how much is it gonna cost? Can you yeah. say that again, Brandon? Uh, uh, people are asking how much is the chair going to cost when it comes out. Yeah, so we we're not sharing uh, product details kind of at this time, but I would say you know details are coming very soon. So uh, stay tuned to you know our social channels to uh, find out more. It's coming sooner than you would think. Absolutely. I don't know if you guys already made it out. I I have been failing right now. How did you get up this? No, there's a little. Um, there's a little vacuum tube you got to aim for. Maybe you have to back up a little bit. Yeah, you see that big yellow arrow? Oh, I see it, but <laughs> it's it's not letting me up. <laughs> okay, I just ruined my whole game. Are you guys watching me play right now? Yes. Oh, yes. No. Okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get in a better position, and then yeah, go yeah. up. Did you guys full Whoa. send up? Oh, okay, I ran out of shots. There you wow. Go. That's good. I didn't even know that. Was I had 14 shots. You guys finished on one you shot? Were doing so <laughs> okay. This is this is going to be a comeback match for sure. See, my strategy is to watch what the two of you do first. Sure. Make sure I don't make any mistakes. <laughs> I came in oh, with such confidence man. that I was I was gonna dominate, and that last hole really just took all of my confidence away. Birdie again. We are moving along. I'm at twenty, so <laughs> I don't play too much golf. But I think a higher score is, is oh, definitely no. better, right? Oh no. I just—I guess you just go for it. I'm just gonna full send. Oh jeez. Oh, oh. Oh, if you get smashed, you go back to the beginning. Okay. I did. I played the safe off. route. That's unlucky. Oh no. Um. Oh, I was doing so well. Okay, so you know we're we're playing a little bit of games here. We're getting a little comfortable. I I do want to bring up one of our our first major big topics when it comes to uh, the partnership, which is how did the partnership even come about? You know, like why 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 are Logitech G and Herman Miller working together? Yeah, absolutely. I can. I'll start Ben, and maybe you help yeah. fill in some of the gaps. Uh, so. I think when we, you know, when we first started working together, um, we actually started working together probably a couple of years ago, specifically on this project. And I think the really great thing between uh, Herman Miller and Logitech is we do have a pretty extensive history already. But um, beyond that, if you actually go back to, oh man, um, uh, go back to kind of the the where kind of Herman Miller started. Um, and how we approach a lot of our design challenges. Uh, we, we're always looking for outside uh, thinkers and, and uh, designers to help us overcome um, uh, uh, you know, different challenges. And you know, if you go even all the way back to the 40s, right, when we worked with Ray and Charles Eames um, and designing things like uh, the, the dining, uh, the plywood or the molded plywood chair, um, you know, that was someone who was outside of the walls of Herman Miller that could bring some really new and innovative thinking inside. Um, and the same thing with gaming, uh, it was very similar. We saw Logitech as, oh, I cannot keep that ball. <laughs> we saw Logitech as the expert um, within, you know, the gaming uh, world. And um, we, we saw that they had a ton of um, understanding of who gamers are, what their specific needs are. And we were looking to them uh, to help, you know, fill those gaps for us and, and partner together on really bringing um, uh, you know, the next generation gaming furniture to the, to the gaming market. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And, you know, what I would say on top of that, too, is, 
you know, what we appreciated about working with Herman Miller on the Logitech G side is really the shared vision about what gaming is and what gaming could be, right? So there was a respect there for, you know, what the activity is. You know, there are people putting hours and hours, whether that's on the esports side or the content creator side to, you know, making this a living, making this a profession, right? And so, you know, just like an athlete would in, you know, professional sports like basketball and football, do things to protect their bodies, make sure their careers are, are you know, extended as long as possible to, you know, be essentially be making that bread for as long as possible. You know, those same principles are, are our vision for gaming as a whole, right? So, um, you know, we were excited to really partner with, with Herman Miller on bringing a lot of the learnings that they already had from developing a lot of great furniture um, for the office space into, into gaming and applying a lot of those uh, similar principles and design thinking. Yeah, Ben, you talked that what you were just talking about and like athletes, this is the one thing that as we were working together in this partnership, I think both Ben and I and the rest of the team just got super excited about it is, is, is thinking about the player just in this completely different way, which is um, bringing traditional um, uh, athletic um, type of, of terminology and theories to uh, to gamers, I mean, uh, you know, whether you're a hobby, passion, passionate gamer, or an esports athlete or streamer, um, it's really important to actually think about your body in a completely different way, so that when you're in game um, and you're looking to perform, um, that your body is actually um, positioned properly to perform. Just like, I mean, a golfer, I think, is a really good example. Um, you know, hence we're playing golf, though not the traditional way. Um, but, you know, in order to generate power, you have to get your feet in the right position. You have to then, you know, your backswing is really important and being able to generate that power through your quads, transferring into your core and then being able to produce club head speed. Um, there, that type of thinking, you can actually apply it to a person who is in a seated position. And that's what we're really excited about. Um, not only bringing, you know, really innovative and next generation products to the market, but also bringing uh, thought leadership uh, to this market as well and in, in bringing that this understanding of ergonomics that uh, we've been hearing quite a bit of people uh, asking for. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to like <laughs> listen, but also, you know, beat you in this game. Sure. Um, the it's competitive. Yeah, I think the, the, the thing that gets me excited too is just thinking about, you know, the future, right? And you know, not just what are we going to do in the next year, but what are we going to do in the next three years, five years, 10 years, right? What does um, gaming look like? The the example I keep on bringing up, I don't know why I decided to go at that point in time, um, is you look at things like, the, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big basketball fan, right? And you look at how the sport of basketball has evolved over the last, you know, you know, couple of decades, right? And it's a completely different sport than what it was uh when it first started right and when we think about gaming as a sport you know it's it's really it's just started right so what is it going to look like in 10 years right um you know and as part of that you know the shoes that were being used at the you know at the beginning of basketball were like you know like the rubber sold shoes and you know careers didn't last very long you know people weren't really thinking about their health to the point that now you look at, you know, professional athletes, they're thinking about it during the off season, the oh. training that goes into it, um, you know, looking at that holistically. And then part of that is also, you know, the shoes that they're using and, you know, things like that. So um, that's really the vision that we have for this partnership, um, you know, over the course of the long term. So a short way of putting it is it sounds like it just made sense. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> And, and I would like to clarify um, for people who may have joined late and, and missed the intro. Today's stream is primarily uh, a Q&A and talking about the Logitech G and uh, Herman Miller partnership as a whole. Um, not discussing specific uh, product features at this time, but talking more about, you know, how the partnership came to be and, and some of those larger ideas um, that influenced kind of the design and, and the, the products that we made. Awesome. Uh, so you got to beat the wind. So one of the questions coming out is, is talking about um, kind of recycled plastics um, and, and talking mm -hmm. about sustainability. Um, 
they, can we talk about maybe sustainability initiatives uh, from both companies and how maybe those align or, or, or what are, are important right now? Absolutely. I can, I can talk a little briefly about on the Herman Miller side. So, um, I mean, one of our core values and strategic principles at Herman Miller is, you know, people, place and planet. Um, and the planet is super important to us when we think about how do we, you know, design our products? How do we then think about manufacturing our products? How do we then think about delivering our products to a customer? Um, and then at the end of its life, what happens to that product? So, I mean, it's, it's literally from end to end, um, um, you know, environmental uh, thought process put into um, the way that we um, bring products to market. And it's, you know, it's, I think I already just mentioned it. It's so important to us that um, our CEO, Andy Owen, has actually made it one of our strategic uh, pillars um, that we make all of our um, uh, decisions off of. So I think a, a specific example to that is, you know, a lot of our materials or a lot of our products that we design are using recyclable uh, materials. Um, we do not use any, um, you know, like harmful chemicals. There's, there's lists out there that, um, you know, are like the red list that we avoid and all the um, um, products. Um, when we also at the end of a, a product's life, most of our products, especially our seating products, um, anywhere between 90% or greater, um, the, our chairs can be recyclable. So you can actually take um, a chair at the end of its life, which most of our chairs are lasting a very long time. Um, but even at the end of it, you can fully um, disassemble the chair and actually recycle it to keep that product out of the landfill. Yeah, and I would say, you know, on the Logitech G side, you know, it is, it's a, a tremendously important um, thing for us as well. You know, all our gaming products across both Logitech G and Astro are carbon neutral, um, you know, and, you know, our, um, you know, Bracken, our, our CEO has made a similar announcement about trying to put more transparency behind the materials that go into our products and um, essentially giving a score to our, um, our products in terms of how much, you know, um, you know, carbon we're, 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 we're transmitting and, and things of that nature. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing our utmost to try and make sure that we're doing what's best for the planet. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really awesome. I saw that that was an announcement you guys made recently. Wasn't it Ben? Yeah. It was mm -hmm. pretty cool. And I, yeah, it's really cool that you guys are putting that carbon, uh, um, uh, data and all the products. That's something that I've been looking for quite a bit in other products I've been you know, purchasing. So that's really interesting. Yeah, that's one of the things I, I honestly like. I, what I love about working with Logitech is you know putting you know essentially putting what's the phrase putting our money where our mouth is or or mm -hmm. vice versa. Yeah. Um, so you know there's a lot of you know just being able to it makes me really proud to to, to work with a company that really does value it, value it so much. Some people in chat are asking what chairs you're sitting in today. Ooh, I am sitting in the Aeron chair. Um, this is um, one of my favorites. Um, I think my favorite is the Embody chair. Um, but working from home, this is this is the one that I had. And unfortunately, right now I'm sitting in. Um, I think I picked this up uh, on Craigslist somewhere. <laughs> Um, so it's not, hasn't been too comfortable. Um, I'm also holding out for, um, upcoming product announcements. <laughs> and I am actually also, I didn't realize this until, uh, we kind of started talking with, with Herman Miller, that I'm actually sitting in a Herman Miller chair. Um, I like <laughs> randomly got this chair from, uh, my uncle like a couple years ago. And I was like, yeah, it's a pretty solid chair, I guess. And I was like looking at the back and I was like, Oh, that's that's a Herman Miller logo. I am sitting in a very nice chair right now. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Uh, you know, for people who do have the opportunity to sit in a Herman Miller chair, um, it, it's just it's just so. I mean, you feel the difference between quality and comfort and those types of things. And I think, um, you know, in addition to some of the other reasons why I love working at Herman Miller, which we talked about, you know, the environmental stuff, it just. Um, like my story of coming to Herman Miller actually starts when I was in an ad agency and I started and I was sitting on this wood chair that just like, I thought I was going to be the most uncomfortable I've ever been in um, because I had a two hour brainstorm session. And then after the two hours, I'd totally forgotten that I was sitting in a wood chair because it was so comfortable. 
I remember just flipping that thing over and seeing that it was an Eames molded uh, plywood chair. Um, and that was, I was like, okay, that's Herman Miller. Someday I'm going to work for that company because they just make the best chairs. And I, <laughs> surprisingly enough, ended up at Herman Miller. Sounds totally like random. That was that was no one asked that question. Uh, John Campbell, where did, how did you end up at Herman Miller? I was no, uh, I actually about to ask. I think you read my mind on that. I was like, John, I want to know, how did you end up at Herman Miller? No, that's great. Uh, someone asked in chat, uh, will this be available in VOD form? Yeah, on on the Logitech G uh, Twitch, it'll it'll be saved as a VOD, and you'll be able to watch it afterwards. Um, someone else is also asking. Will the chair that we are making continue the Herman Miller tradition of shipping pre-built? Yes. Yes, it will. Um, not only did I just get a bogey um, that I cheered for, which I shouldn't have, um, but yes, the product will be, um, come uh, fully assembled. Uh, so that's, I think, we think this is what a really uh, awesome thing is, you know, when you think about, um, you know, when you think about what Herman Miller is and what we stand for and, you know, quality craftsmanship, uh, 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 a premium uh, customer experience. One of those things should be when the product comes, uh, you know, it comes um, fully assembled and you just, you can roll it out of the box and use it. We, ben, we were talking to someone last week and they like had this great analogy about this, which is uh, when you go to buy a car, uh, you go to the dealership and you pick out your car and they don't ship you 47,000 parts to your house and have you put it together. You get to drive that car right up the lot. And I think that was, uh, when we heard that from someone, I thought that was a really great analogy of, you know, what you should expect out of something like uh, from Herman Miller and Logitech. This is actually yep. very sad how many strokes it's taken me to finish that hole, but great answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these maps are hard like i i think i went very hard. purple in the last one yeah oh. i think you know in my head i was like oh i'll do pretty well but when when you're actually talking and and also trying to play it is it is a much more <laughs> difficult endeavor than i expected uh oh no i don't know if that, that was didn't good go well not. is that good nope not good nope Ooh, Let's see, let's see. Okay. I would love to go to like a a, oh. a a mini golf place like this in real life. Sure. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. I don't know how realistic that is, but. Oh, okay. So connecting back to, to one of the larger questions we, we kind of want to talk about is when you're thinking about like gaming or, or even working, like oftentimes you're, you're there for many hours at a time, right? And I think a lot of people think about their peripherals um, and they want a quality setup. Like they think about their mouse, they think about their keyboard, maybe a nice monitor. But I think something that, that tends to go like unthought about is the chair that you sit in, which is funny because I would argue that the chair is probably the thing you use the most. If you're ever like not playing a game and not using your mouse, uh, you're, you're probably still sitting down. Um, yep. So maybe we can talk a little bit about why ergonomics are so important, especially when it comes to gaming. Yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll start since you started the last one, John. You know, yeah. I think, you know, we kind of talked to this about a little bit already in terms of, um, you know, being able to protect your body so that you can do what you love for longer periods of time. And I think that's still important, um, you know. And then I think what's also interesting about gaming as opposed to things like working in the office is, you know, the needs, I think the cognitive needs and the stress level is way more intense, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I'm do when I'm, you know, uh, so I play a lot of Final Fantasy 14. So when, I, when I'm in like the middle of a raid, you know, it's like, you gotta make decisions like super, super, super quick, right? Um, and that's a just a different cognitive load, I would say, than, you know, trying to figure out your spreadsheet or being on a Zoom call or, or some, you know, but you're still applying a lot of the same principles in terms of sitting for long periods of time, making sure that you're staying comfortable so that, you know, you can stay focused and in that right mental state. So there's a lot of similarities and there's a lot of thinking that Herman Miller has already done that we want to want to bring to the table. Totally. But then also think about, you know, what's different. And to me, it's just the the, the need of a, a player who's playing is 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 very different, right? Um, no matter what what game that is, whether that's CS:GO or Final Fantasy XIV or, or what have you, so um, yeah, it's important yeah, to stay focused. 
Absolutely. And I think, I mean, now is, couldn't it be a better time to have that conversation? I mean, that's such a good, good question because for most of us, we are at home, right? Um, working in a, in a COVID world right now, working from home. And what that has, for a lot of people, um, what that has resulted in is them ending up at their dining room table, um, ending up on their sofa or their recliner. Um, and, you know, for me, like, you know, I was probably optimistic. I was like, okay, like, this isn't gonna last very long. Um, but and a lot of people probably felt the same thing. They're like, I could do this for a month. I could probably do it for two. But now, you know, depending on what part of the world you're in, um, you potentially could have been doing this already for three months, maybe even longer, working from home in those types of environment. And you'll start to feel this, right? Like sitting in your dining room table for eight hours or 10 hours straight um, for a month, two months, three months is going to put a toll on your body. And um, at Herman Miller, we do, um, which is kind of odd, right? As a seating company, we, we look at a lot of the, um, the research related to like, you know, we saw this probably, you know, 10, five years ago, you know, sitting is the new smoking, sedentary work is going, you know, is harmful to your body. When we dug through that research and we analyzed it, they're right. Um, when you sit in an unhealthy posture and your spine is, um, you, you know, in that unhealthy posture, you're putting a lot of pressure on your disc. Um, you're preventing blood flow to your brain. Um, you, a lot of people end up with lower back pain. Um, and it, this very thing uh, um, is, is probably prevalent in a lot of people's minds today. But what we saw within the gaming world is that it's, it's exacerbated, right? Um, five, 10 X um, because uh, the players are just sitting for so long and focusing um, especially competitive players on, you know, you know, grinding out and really, you know, honing their skills. Uh, so what we need to be doing when we think about ergonomics is actually figuring out how to put your body in a position of strength as you sit, right? And that's what we're really excited about as, you know, for this, this, this product announcement that's going to be coming soon um, and future insights and learnings that will be coming. We'll be focusing heavily proper alignment of your body um, so that as you sit and as you play stream, whatever it may be, that your body is in a strength position so that um, you stay comfortable, um, so that your mind's functioning at, at a much higher level. Um, uh, and so that um, you, your body and the way that it's moving, you know, if you're making a big broad swipe of a mouse playing an FPS game that, you know, your, your upper arm and your table and your chair are all properly aligned so you can actually create leverage and create power um, these types of concepts that are typically found in traditional sports, but we're now bringing to gaming um, in a really exciting way. Okay, I gotta shoot. I, I talked too long. What a black <laughs> hole. Okay, avoid black holes, right? Oh, didn't avoid it. Yeah, and I think, I think what you're saying, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's honestly something that a lot of people might not even realize. Like, I think a lot of people play games for a long time or work for a long time. And they just think it's normal. They're like, oh, I have back pain. You know, I was sitting for a long time. There's nothing I can really, really do to, to fix that. Um, and, and they don't realize that there are these options, you know, like getting a better chair, having better posture. Um, I, I, like, I, I can attest to that as someone who probably played way too many games in, in <laughs> high school and college playing on uh, like collegiate teams. I had, I didn't realize, but I had a very nice chair. Um, and, I, and I took yeah. that to college and, you know, when I came home, uh, visiting for the holidays, I'm like, well, I don't have my chair. I guess I'll just use like this wooden dining room table. And after, you know, even like two, three hours, I'm like, wow, like my back's killing me. My shoulder hurts. I don't have that arm support. Um, and it, it's something that you might not realize until you experience like what could be. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. And, you know, I think a lot of people have, have realized that, you know, we spend, you know, for a lot of us who are, have been working in the, in say like an office environment where, you know, we are sitting in Herman Miller chairs, right? You know, there's a lot of thought that goes in, into a lot of the office equipment that, you know, we've been using, at least in my career, right? Um, uh, and then just didn't, you know, think about it when we moved back to, um, you know, our personal time, which is sitting in front of a computer at home, as opposed to sitting in front of a, a computer at work. And, you know, um, there's no reason why it shouldn't, right? Like one of the, the first things they, they tell you as an adult is like, buy a good mattress, right? Is yep. because you spend like a third of your life sleeping on it, right? And I think the same the same principles apply for, for things like gaming as well, right? Um, yeah, 
So totally mattress running shoes and a, and a good chair. That's what yeah. I say. <laughs> you know what to invest in now. Yeah. Uh, someone asked from YouTube, uh, how long have you guys been planning this partnership? Is it a more recent thing or has it been a long time coming? We, we looked back at where this originally started and I think it was, we dated it back to, uh, uh 2017, um, from, a, a, uh, for, for the gaming side of, of this project, our teams, our companies actually work together on, um, the video conferencing side, um, as, uh, in our ultimate settings team, as we were looking at how to see, bring more innovation to the office space. So we, we had an existing partnership there, but gaming started probably it's probably oh, two and a half, almost three years ago now. Yeah, I have no. Where where do we go? I think you, you gotta to, be you on to, the leaves. Yeah, you have to like go down the leaves a little bit, and then there's a green. Like if you go straight ahead, John, I don't I, I don't know what direction it is, but that way for me, you'll like land on the green opposite way. If you go the opposite way, maybe you see it. If you just shoot onto that green below you, that's where you want to go. Oh, come on. Uh, oh, I see you. I see you, Joe H. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, so I should not follow you. <laughs> what I'm getting based off of that. Gaming chair for adults only, or would you be considering a design for young adults and children as well? Interesting. Um, so uh, all of our... Uh, well, when we think about chair design, um, the, what we actually use is anthropometric uh, body uh, range. Um, so we use North America and global anthropometric data. Anthropometric is just what is kind of the average kind of say fifth to 95th percentile. Uh, so uh, when we design chairs at Herman Miller, we design chairs to, to focus the broadest population. Um, right, so that's what um, you know. Mira does, you know, Brandon. You said you're sitting. I think Mira actually supports um, from the fifth to ninety-fifth percentile. Um, Sale supports from the fifth to ninety-fifth percentile. Aaron actually supports from the first to the ninety-ninth percentile um, because what we actually do, um, the B size chair can fit that fifth to ninety-fifth, but then the A size can reach down into that you know single to fifth percentile. Um, then the C size chair can reach all the way up to the 99th percentile. So we have, when we think about range, we try to we try to create a product that has a really broad range um, for fitting. Um, for uh, children, um, I think that's actually a really good question. I, I may just be reading into it too much, but um, I think it's actually a really important one for gaming because what, what we've been seeing is just this increase um, uh, focus at even a very young age of, you know, committing to competitive uh, uh, gaming. So, you know, my kids someday, when they enter into junior high or high school, um, they're going to be able to choose between, you know, golf, soccer, um, basketball, or gaming, right? That's already a reality for a lot of uh, kids today. So as parents, um, holy smokes, I finally found the green. Uh, <laughs> oh, out of shots, darn it. <laughs> Uh, but for parents, they're going to need to start looking at, you know, just like a football player needs a good helmet, right, to keep their brain safe and everything, you know, yep. and to perform, um, especially if they're going to be grinding out at a young age, like they need, they need the right tools to keep their body healthy, um, especially if they want to commit to uh, something like that. So totally. it's a long-winded answer, oh, a long-winded answer to say like, yeah, I, that's, a, that's a really, really great question. Any more black holes right there. On a scale of one to ten, how comfy will this chair be? Eleven. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, it, we Ben and I were actually just talking about this a little bit ago. Uh, you know, a really good chair, um, when it's working correctly, you shouldn't feel it, right? It should yeah. just disappear. Uh, yeah. So comfort is a subjective measure of like, well, how comfortable are you? Uh, Eleven. I, I don't know how comfortable I am. What you should be measuring comfort on is, is does this chair function at a level to where like it completely disappears? And if it does that, then we have done our jobs well. Yeah, it, it almost sounds like it, it's not necessarily a measure of how comfy you are, but like 
how much pain are you experiencing? If that if that's like zero, one, then you're probably extremely comfortable, right? You're probably sitting with good posture in a good chair. Exactly. That's a really great, great way of thinking of it. Yeah. Are you guys I already done with this one? Yep. Oh, I finished. <laughs> I, I, I may have yeah. just hit it Brandon, a bunch. Brandon's though. catching back. I'm catching up. Yeah. <laughs> been, oh, I think I've you guys are catching up to you. me. I, I don't think I'm catching you. up to you guys. <laughs> We're almost in triple digits, which I'm, you know, I'm not a golf man myself, but it doesn't sound too great. Yeah. And yeah, I would just say too, to, to add on to what you were saying, John, it's, it's really, you know, when we talk about, as I was talking about earlier, it's about focus, right? So like, you know, I want to be able to focus a hundred percent on, you know, the game that I'm playing or the thing that I'm doing, right? I don't want to be thinking about like shifting back and forth because my body feels uncomfortable, even if I'm not, you know, explicitly thinking about it although sometimes you can be right if you're sitting in like you know at a dining room table right um even if it's like subconscious it's in the back of your brain right that's like almost like taking up mental ram as the way i've been thinking about it right because if, mm -hmm. if there's something in the back of your head thinking about how uncomfortable you are then that's less focus on the game the decision that you have to make in the yeah. moment the inputs that are coming in to just make you decide you know i need to do this or do that um so those are all all things so yeah if you if it's disappearing then we're we're doing our job properly absolutely i'm in the water i'm also in water yeah. i think it's like oh i thought it was a good thing and then Me i, too. And I that was fell wrong. out i think i don't know if you have to take a specific path i think it just no i think i'm doing it right i have no idea where i'm oh, going maybe i'm not doing it right i don't think i'm moving fast enough through the water Someone oh. asked if someone is asking what kind of products should we expect from this partnership? Some epic chairs with LEDs? Question <laughs> mark. I would, you know, I just uh, as we kind of talked about in the beginning, I, I know everybody's itching for details. They're coming soon. We promise. Um, just keep keep your eyes peeled. They're they'll be coming very soon. Oh, I get it. You have to jump. Oh, you can jump. Yeah, you click, you Wait, right you... click. What? Yeah, oh, in the wow. water. Oh, I did oh not my jump. God. That's it's a game changer. See, this is how I can tell that John was practicing without telling me. <laughs> He's like, oh, you guys didn't know you could jump in the golf game? <laughs> I should have waited till the very end. Oh, you left click. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh I, I guess I didn't I jump high enough. At least I know how to jump now. Oh. Oh, I, okay, I messed up. Yeah, if you hadn't told us that, that would have been like a competitive advantage for the, the rest <laughs> of the... Uh, someone's asking, for those of us who are already using a Herman Miller chair, do you think that this will be something that is comparable um, or could be a replacement for everyday use? You guys are really creative with your questions. Um, well done. I... Uh, um, so there's, I think there's really interesting and we've already talked a little bit about it of, you know, um, the times that we're in right now where people are not only working from home, um, uh, but they're also gaming more as well. So we're seeing this really interesting, uh, uh, this collision of worlds of like my gaming space is now my office space or my office space is now my gaming space. Uh, so this is, I think, when we think about not only um, what we'll be bringing, you know, shortly, but then also the future is like, the future is that the reality is, is that we're, we're all trying to use and maximize our space as much as we possibly can. So we should be thinking about our space holistically for all the different things that we're doing um, in that space. So uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it could very well be multifunctional for you. I swear these are getting more and more complicated. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. I feel like this map is trying to uh, trick me, which, you know, it is. <laughs> I think I just go this Oh, black hole. hole. Uh, is this going to be targeted for keyboard and mouse users only? Any considerations for racing wheel or controller use? Uh, sweet question. If anyone, uh, I can talk to it too. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I would say, um, 
just stay tuned for more details. They're they'll be coming they'll be coming very soon. To kind of connect back on on one of the larger questions that we had again, um, speaking about ergonomics, uh, what what were some of the primary things maybe that we were looking at um, for when it comes to gamers specifically and making ergonomic products? Yeah, I'll I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so the you know as we worked with with Logitech and we've gone through the design process, one part of our um, design process, um, and we do this all the time at Herman Miller, is, is research. So observational research and, and leaning into actual the consumer and understanding what their specific needs are. Uh, so we had spent some time um, with uh, specific players and teams and, you know, understanding what makes them unique. Uh, and we found some really interesting data points of just how a gamer sits and how different that is from an office worker. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of similarities. Um, you know, they still have a mouse and a keyboard in front of them, but we see a lot of uh, gamers more sitting upright um, and the distance between their nose and their monitor is, is, is much closer than a typical office worker would be. So um, it, when you think about ergonomics, you gotta actually think about the position of your body. So being able to properly support uh, a user when they're in that in that unique position. Um, other things are, uh, you know, your spine. Um, we see this uh, all the time um, in uh, not only the just the regular chair market, but the gaming chair market. As people are talking, a lot of what people talk about is lumbar support. We hear that all the time um, at Herman Miller, and the way that we approach ergonomics within uh, seating is. Uh, is actually starting at the base of your spine first. And I won't, Ben knows I keep a spine in my room. I, unless someone on chat like demands me take it out, I won't take it out. I think um, people might I think you should do John, it. I'm I think it shows, it shows your spine, John. Uh, so what I have is my handy dandy spine. Um, and I won't over put a lot of details in this, but your lumbar is in this region and everyone thinks that, you know, this curve means that I should shove a pillow there. No, it does not mean that. Um, when you think about spinal support, um, you think about it the exact same way that you would build a house, right? Um, you would build a house by first laying a strong foundation and then building walls up from there. If you go and just build walls on dirt, right? Your walls aren't very strong. Um, it's the same type of concept. If you're just to use lumbar, the rest of your spine isn't very strong. So uh, what we uh, at Herman Miller, what we've patented is this, uh, this, this thing called posture fit. And if you can find it in every single one of our chairs. Um, and it's this idea that if you support the base of the spine first, the sacrum, you can actually prevent your hips from rotating back. And you can actually now create a really strong foundation um, that the rest of your spine, you just need subtle support in your lumbar, your thoracic and your cervical part of your spine in order to give yourself proper alignment. And then you, again, going back to comfort, right? Now the chair, I'm in this proper alignment, the chair is doing the work for me and it keeps me supported properly to where I don't have to think about, you know, my mom yelling at me, sit up straight, sit up straight, right? Um, I'm just thinking, <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. Um, and I have the right tools that, you know, keep my spine in proper alignment uh, so um, I can stay comfortable uh, and comfortable longer. I, I took out the spine. I didn't actually think I was going to take out the spine. <laughs> I just shouldn't have mentioned it. And, and what are some of those, like, I, I know Herman Miller has done a ton of research when it comes to ergonomics already, um, you know, with when they're looking at designing chairs. What are some, like, tips that maybe people could take away who are in chat right now who may not necessarily have a Herman Miller chair, but you know, want to have better posture. What, what are some tips that we could provide them? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I mean, one of the most important things uh, is uh, the height of your chair. So pretty much hopefully every single chair um, outside of, um, you know, like if you're sitting on like a dining room chair or something like that, um, should have some kind of height adjustability on them. Uh, and height disability is really important. And I see this a lot of times uh, where uh, uh, gamers will actually, their desk is too high. Because their desk is too high, they're lifting their chair up so that they can get their arms in the right position. Um, in theory, that's a good idea, right? Because your arms and your hands are, are the one things that are creating performance. Um, you're clicking, moving, uh, moving the mouse and the keyboard. 
Uh, however, what happens when you do that is you actually put a lot of pressure in the back part of your legs and the back part of your legs has a ton of, of blood flow. And when you do that, your legs are going to fall asleep. You're going to feel uncomfortable. Um, and also more importantly, your feet are come off the ground or you're on your tiptoes. So let's trace this all the way back full circle to an athletic posture. An athletic posture, right, is your feet flat on the floor, spread apart, and you're able to quickly make, uh, make a move um, or create power. Uh, a gamer should do the same thing. Your feet need to be flat on the floor. Uh, and from there, now you've started, that's the first starting point um, to, to healthy posture in a good position of your body. So again, you're probably, your seat is probably just a little bit too high. Lower it down, look at yourself in the mirror. What you're looking for is a nice 90 degree angles between your quads and your calves. Um, and once you hit that 90 degrees, you'll know that your seat is in the right height. Okay, I gotta get over this hill real quick. <laughs> oh, oh, that's totally. I, 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 I gave up on this one. I had yeah. no idea how to do this one. I think the, you guys, the, you guys... the feet on the floor is a huge thing. I think a lot of people don't realize that that's even. I think when people think of posture, they're like, "All right, my my back is straight. Like I'll just sit up like this," and that's all they really think about. And I know, like, I I'm very tall, so my my feet like almost always touch the ground. But I've seen like numerous amounts of my like personal friends who. <laughs> Their feet are like dangling or like their toes are just barely touching and it, it I, I never really thought about that before it is something that like even even like helps you sit up straight longer you know it's it's like that correct form all over that that makes for for better posture yeah typically we see gamers crossing their legs and they'll sit with their legs crossed underneath them in the seat and that's that's because their seat their chair isn't properly supporting their their spine so they're trying to compensate with their legs on underneath them mm-hmm yeah and i think too it's like you know we're, we're in i'm interested in seeing where like this goes and this type of thinking goes is like you know things like baseball and, and basketball like there's there's the element of comfort right but then there's the element of performance right so you know i i i, I played baseball i think up until i was like six or seven right but <laughs> I, would, I would you know i would say people who are playing you know baseball you know like uh like jim on our team who uh you know, used to play professionally for MLB would, would say, you know, he was a pitcher and he can tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong or full of it, but you know, it's more than just like, if you're just throwing with like all this weight on your arm and your shoulder, like that's just asking for injury. Right. It's all, it's a, it's a full body motion, right. Starting from like the base, right. Starting from your feet, you have to bring your whole body into it. Right. And there's no reason why that same, you know, thought and technique shouldn't apply to, you know, gaming as well, even if it's just like a mouse movement here, right? If you're not thinking about how your whole body is moving, if you're just using your shoulder, you're just using your wrist, that's how those injuries start to happen, right? Because it's there's so much strain and pressure that's happening on that single point. Totally. And, and I think we actually just wrapped up our, our 18th hole there. I actually still ended up losing, <laughs> but it was I by a much it. smaller was, margin than I originally expected. Um, I, I think for this for this last bit here, we can we can kind of switch over more to our our, our larger screen and, and just kind of look at a couple more of these yeah. questions. Um, someone asked in chat, what, what has been your favorite part about working together or the process so far? Yeah, I, I you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, like, but I'll just be honest, and I'm not, I'm not just saying this because you're here, John. But like, you know, my my favorite part about working on this has been just working with you. And I think, Aww. you know, we we're, we're talking about, you know, um, you know, products and and things, but really, you know, it's it's vision, right? It's it's getting excited about, you know. You know, working in in in, um, in gaming is a lot, and and thinking about you know what this could be. It's not. It's more than just like trying to figure out products. It's you know, I, I love gaming. I've loved gaming for as long as I can remember. I've always wanted to work in gaming, and um, you know, thinking about where this goes, and you know, being at the forefront of of thought and what what this this industry and what this space could be i think that's that's the part that's exciting to me um is just sharing visions and sharing thoughts and you know sharing where we think it could be going and that that to me is is a beautiful thing to do absolutely i love you too ben thanks <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, 
I would I would echo that. I think the the other thing I would add to that, what gets me most excited is um, there's just so many smart people at Logitech, and there's nothing better than just like bringing really smart people together um, to go and try to create something new and different. Um, it, when I think about like what gets me excited is is doing the new and different. Um, and you know, at Herman Miller, we're a you know a hundred year old you know furniture manufacturer, uh, and you know, there's nothing more exciting than to, you know, bring uh, uh, this really awesome and incredible company into this really, I think, awesome and incredible uh, industry of gaming and doing that alongside incredibly smart people that have been wildly successful at it already um, just makes this whole project super fun. Yeah, I, I think for me, for, for the club, my favorite part has been just sitting in on the meetings listening about how to improve your posture because every time we go through one of these discussions <laughs> i feel myself like sit up you've probably seen me this stream like, yeah. <laughs> fix my posture a couple times I, I go like this i i make sure my feet are on the ground um it, it it is something that 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 like is easy to slip of the mind and it's honestly something especially when it comes to gaming i think that we have to focus on more and that's why it's it's kind of so awesome that this partnership is happening um I, I see someone in the chat asking if, if the chair will be wired or wireless. Um, I, I, I know that we, we aren't speaking on product details, but I would, I would hope that it's not going to be wired, I guess I can say. That'd be interesting, though. The tethered chair. Yeah, That's funny. Let's, let's look through here. I see a couple questions in there. Maxwell 47, I do not know if it will fix your arterial pelvic tilt. Um, that's a good question though. I think that's, uh -huh. that's, that's a good um, kind of segue into talking about like Herman Miller's like return policies, right? Like if someone just wanted to try out a chair, they could theoretically just buy one, try it out. And if it, if it doesn't work for them, they're, they're, it's, it's, it's easily to undo, right? Absolutely, yeah. So you're going to have a 30 uh, day uh, hassle free um, return policy. So um, obviously, we're in a COVID world, and you know, getting out and trying product is going to be really challenging because we want to make sure that everyone stays safe um, uh, um, uh, globally. And, and so, with that, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to you know make a purchase. You can receive the product. Um, it's going to come free shipping. Um, and then also, uh, it will, yeah, you'll have a 30 day return policy. So sit on it, uh, for, you know, 10, 15, 20 days, um, 30 days. And if it's not working for you, if it's, you know, not fixing, uh, you know, a problem that you have, um, you know, well, first of all, uh, hopefully before 30 days, give our customer service team a call. Um, they're incredible people that are extremely smart and, what they will do is they'll actually help you um, problem solve, right? A lot of times what we find is that people just haven't adjusted the chair properly um, in order for it to fit them uh, correctly. Uh, and we'll walk you through that and help you adjust that uh, properly so that the chair is fit to you. And then, um, you know, give it a couple more days. If it still doesn't work, then just put it back in the package and send it back and you have nothing to worry about. Um, so we want to make sure that, you know, everyone gets the opportunity to try it. Um, uh, as they, um, you know, before they have to fully commit to it. Yeah, I would say too, like, you know, John, in, in a lot of our discussions, you know, a, a metaphor that you've used that that really resonated with me is, you know, it could have all, all like all the greatest technology in the world, but if it's not used properly, you know, then it's, you know, it's, it's setting yourself up for failure, right? So the example that you've been using is, you know, uh, the best running shoe in the world. If I'm a size 12 and, you know, you put, get put into a size seven running shoe, it doesn't matter how good the shoe is. It's not, it's not gonna, it's not just not gonna work for you because it's too small. Right? right. So, um, you know, you, everything should be set up properly and be, you know, put, put a little bit of thought in at, at the beginning and, you know, save yourself, you know, uh, you know, time in, in the long run and pain in the long run. Totally. And, and I do see someone else saying in chat, asking kind of again about something we spoke on. Uh, they said, do you really need to have your feet on the floor when sitting? I normally have my feet hanging when sitting. Changing the height of my chair makes me feel like I don't perform as good in game. Uh, something I'll just say off personal experience is I adjusted after hearing, you know, all these discussions about posture, I adjusted my chair to what I heard was correct. And I adjusted everything else around that. 
because for me when I adjusted my chair like my desk felt way too high and then my monitor felt way too low and I was like this isn't right but that's just because I have gotten used to what I had previously been using even though that was wrong right so I think if you and tell me if I'm wrong John or Ben but I I would adjust my chair to kind of that proper alignment and then I adjusted my desk height I adjusted my monitor height to kind of fit that and now I feel way better than I did before Absolutely. There's there's nothing more important than getting your feet flat on the floor. And you're absolutely right. A lot of people, when they do that, everything else is going to be off for them. So, Brandon, you, exactly what you did. You need to lower your desk down. You need to get your monitor in the right position. Um, you really, your monitor, what you're looking for is um, if you're sitting, you know, anywhere between 12 to 18 inches, you want your eyes just uh, looking just a little bit below the center point of your monitor. Um, you're going to want uh, your table um, at the right height to where um, your arms aren't, there isn't any pressure applied to uh, um, uh, any tendons in your arm. So you're going to want that low enough. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be about adjusting your entire setup. But really, if you're, if you're sitting with your feet up off the ground, everything just needs to come down equally the same amount. Um, so it should keep everything fairly you know, the same, but you're just, everything's now down, let's say three inches. So um, now what you'll start to find is you're gonna have this anchor point that will keep your upper body um, stronger, no matter what chair you're sitting in right now, right? Like just having your feet there, you're gonna be in a much better position. Um, you're still, if you're lacking kind of that lower back support, it's still gonna be hard for your total spine to be supported, but your feet will be properly on the ground um, and you'll be able to give yourself a really strong anchor point to make a big flick of the mouse or you know you know have your head in the right position to take in a bunch of data and make a decision yeah it's th it's instead of thinking about like you know your performance from like here to here right uh using your fingers and your your arm it's about bringing you know your full your full body into it um and i i totally get it you know there's there's levels of comfort right i, I think about you know once again going back to the basketball analogy you know, for, for the longest time, uh, when I was younger, I, I was, I was just shooting wrong. Right. I was, I was using, essentially, I was like flicking my, my wrist out. And so my, the ball was going this way. Right. And it took me, you know, a long time to essentially retrain my muscle memory. Right. And so I do think there's, there's certain elements too of like a give and take, right. You know, you know, there's some players that, you know, end up, you know, not, what are what is considered like a great shot you know sometimes they'll deviate a little bit but they find what works for them so uh, there's also this element of like you just got to find what works for you as well um you know but as as long as you understand the basic principles you know at least that's a starting point where there, if there's any deviations you know it's it's done with a purpose i, I do want to make a really quick product announcement for captain richard the wingback brown and tan chair in the background is currently for sale right now. <laughs> I have no idea what the price is, but he wants to know when we're announcing it. Um, my wife will be very upset with me if I give it away. Um, so, Captain Richard, you're gonna have to make it worth my while. <laughs> <laughs> We, we are kind of getting near the end of our live stream. Um, I'll, I'll grab a few more questions here as, as we kind of wrap up. Um, someone, someone asked a question. I think this kind of relates to what we talked to earlier about Logitech G and Herman Miller working together, but they said, mm -hmm. can you talk about the collaboration in the design process and the insights that Logitech brought to Herman Miller? Yeah. So I, you know, I would say, you know, we, um, our designers have been, have been, you know, that's like, as, as John said, you know, when getting all these smart people in the room together, watching designers kind of, kind of geek out, I think we talk a lot about like the difference in posture, right? So, you know, the posture of an active gamer is very different than say the, the posture of an office worker, right? You can still kind of lean, lean a little bit back and, and type an email or, or do all these type of things. Whereas if you're gaming, if you're playing, you know, you know, CSGO or playing League, League of Legends, you're, you're a little bit more active, right? Your, your body is more engaged. Um, so, you know, we, we, there's a little bit of a, a difference in posture while some of the principles of sitting for long periods of time are still the same. So there was a lot of conversations that happened about where the differentiation is, where the similarities are. Um, and that's really, I think, where we brought a lot of value to the table is in those conversations on things that we're seeing in things like mice development and keyboard development. Absolutely. Yeah, the only thing I would, I would add to that is I was, I love, we threw our best people at this. Um, 
like our best designers and our best engineers. Uh, and I'm just super stoked um, with what we created. Yeah, I, I think it really is like when it comes down to it, it, it's really just like that gaming perspective and gaming knowledge that is being shared with an already huge knowledge of, you know, ergonomics and, and chairs in general. It's kind of like, how, how are gamers different than your, your typical uh, office worker? I think that is what Logitech brought to the table. Um, someone in Twitch is asking, uh, they're saying a quality desk would be nice. Are you guys planning on collaborating on more products in the future? Can we, pers can we expect more Herman Miller uh, and Logitech G collaboration in the future? I think it's a really great question. I, uh, like Ben had mentioned in the beginning, uh, you know, this whole idea around, you know, crafting a vision, um, it, like, I think we even mentioned it too, is that, you know, this is one of our, this is our first step, um, together as, you know, as partners. And as we start to craft this vision and, and lay out this framework, we we're super excited to, you know, bring more new ideas, um, and thoughts to, to this industry. So, um, a lot of, really probing questions on getting more product details. So I'm going to give more vague answers. Hopefully that's okay. Totally, totally. Uh, and finally, I, I think this is actually a great question to end on. Um, someone's asking, will this chair be compatible with Wii Sports? Uh, I, you know, Wii Sports is a fantastic game. I actually believe that it is compatible with pretty much any chair. Um, so I, I think it's safe to say that it will be. Oh, I love it. Good question. Uh, before we kind of wrap up here, uh, do, do Ben or John, do you have any last things that you want to say as we kind of outro? No, thanks for spending time with us. Um, you know, I know everybody's kind of chomping at the bit here and I, with good reason. So be patient with us, you know, stay tuned on, on our social channels for the, the next couple of weeks and um, we'll have more to share soon. Yeah, I would just say I appreciate all the great questions. Um, we get, I know we didn't get to all of them. Um, but as we start to roll more things out, we'll be a lot of these um, questions I'm seeing in chat. Um, we'll start to answer those um, specifically, both in, you know, uh, what you'll see from us uh, directly, both in marketing, but also in other areas of thought leadership. So um, thank you so much for the, the um, just the passion that um, um, you brought to this the stream and the questions. Totally. Yeah. And, and thanks again, everyone, for tuning in uh, for this partnership live stream i think this was a lot of fun uh definitely keep an eye on both herman miller and logitech g socials in the near future and we'll be looking to share more information and start to answer a lot more of those product questions that you guys were asking in chat today uh so thanks again bye everyone great thanks everybody thank you